there was a, there was one point where I, I remember looking across um, to see where Vinny was, and all I could see was like his his hand holding a an airline <laughs> sticking away from the side, and, and the rest of his body was bent over behind the container. I was I was like, well, what was Vinny up to? So I, I went around to see what he was up to, and he was <laughs> he was being sick, and then that made me feel sick, and then I was being sick, and I saw the captain on the on the, uh, the bridge of the vessel, just looking down at us, kind of with a smile on his face. He must have been like, ah, these land lovers. Assalamu alaikum. Up here today in Shahid Park in Kuwait. It's a very foggy, misty morning. It's absolutely beautiful. I thought I'd continue my story, my professional story, moving on to when uh, I went offshore in Holland for the first time. Offshore for the first time, but it was in Holland. So in the last video I mentioned, I just did a job in Mozambique, my first ever international uh, job. And then when I came back, did a lot of pondering on what just happened, because it was, it was really something, something significant. So my company back in that time had a, had a base in a place called Den Helder. It's a very quiet part of Holland on the coast. I really like quiet places. I like being able to walk around and have the choice to just ponder and be alone with my own thoughts when I want to be. But I also like to be around people when I, <laughs> you know, I need to be around people too. So Den Helder is quite a nice environment for me. Plus it was, it's, it's cold, rainy, and uh, the seashore. I mean, I just, I love that kind of thing used to go and sit up there by the seashore, brilliant place. And the guys up in, uh, in my base in, in CGG, in my company, very, very good people, super supportive. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was a great place to, to go up and learn. So in these jobs, these offshore jobs, what happens is typically you have uh, someone on the rig that deploys the, the tool system into the borehole and you'll have someone who will be on the boat with the re with the source which is uh, typically three to four air guns in a frame hung off the side by a crane and then the guys on the rig will have a, a radio and a digital controller we'll have a radio and a digital controller on the boat and uh, the systems communicate between each other um, digitally through the radio. The bit that was interesting for me was uh, just the experience of going offshore in a boat. I'd just come back from Mozambique. I was still a student in my mind, uh, still in that student mode. And uh, there I was with a, a group of guys in Holland, foreign country, uh, albeit they were very, very nice people. But I was in a foreign country getting ready for going offshore uh, in a it's a it's an aggressive environment I mean in terms of health and safety you've got to be very very careful uh, in terms of you know the types of people you come across because people that spend all their time offshore in a boat have to develop some quite significant mental fortitude uh, mental toughness you know because they're away from their families they have to deal with I mean, unless you've actually been offshore in a, in a Force 9 gale or more in one of those boats, you won't realise how tough it is. You know, you see those programmes on Discovery Channel about the guys that go crab fishing in Alaska. You know, it's not that bad, but I mean, the, this is the sort of thing. It's tough. It's really tough for those guys on the boat. Uh, you know, we're just coming on to do a survey. We're only there for, you know, a week or something. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's really interesting. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So the key to any good job is the preparation. So we spent about, I think if I remember rightly, about a week preparing for the job. I was basically just learning. I didn't really know what, uh, what to prepare. I was just in, you know, learning mode, taking notes, doing whatever they wanted me to do. Uh, then you ship everything offshore, the tools, uh, gun container and uh, 
and the recording container. I think if you have a source on the rig as well, a uh, seismic source, you also need um, you need to have a gun container. Just going into a tunnel here. You need to have a gun container which contains all of the bits and pieces you need for the gun, the gun itself and the airlines, and you need uh, at least at least two compressors. which are also contained inside big containers. A lot of equipment, you know, to do these uh, jobs. Very specialist. So all the equipment gets shipped off uh, in a boat. It either goes ahead of you in one of the supply boats, or if the job is uh, imminent, you'll go with it. And uh, as I was on the boat crew, I went on the boat my first time ever ever on a boat like that a supply boat uh, and the rig crew usually go on a chopper they usually go by chopper so me and my good friend Vinny uh, we had a <laughs> we had a really great experience together on this one yeah we went off together on the boat and uh, and the engineers went off on the chopper to the rig so in this particular job myself and Vinny we went got onto the boat like I said it was my first time on one of these supply vessels I remember in the shore of course the boat's not moving so you climb up onto the what they call the bridge uh, which is where the captain is I remember he was um, drinking a very 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 black cup of coffee <laughs> it looked like it if you turn it upside down it would uh, stay in the cup he was smoking some kind of a rolled up thing I've never smelt anything like it before it was very very strong and I I have a problem with cigarette smoke anyway I've always detested it since I've been a kid and this was this stuff was horrible met him he gave us our rooms and we went down and you know got installed it's a, quite a nice room to be honest with you we checked out where all the equipment was and made our plan uh, we had to get a like a hired crane on board and I remember there was um there was a young kid who was uh was, was the driver of this crane me and Vinny were looking at each other you know this guy looks like he's 17 years old are you sure you're qualified yeah it yeah, should be fine when you get out of the kind of the dock area things started to get a little bit rough and I, I, I just I just remember feeling you know not particularly well I went up onto the bridge which was a very bad idea because it smelled of cigarette smoke and up in the bridge is the highest point in the boat and the, that's where it moves the most and I mean, if you've ever been seasick, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. So the crew um, on the bridge, I mean, the bridge was moving around. It was like this. Uh, like I said, it's high up in the boat, so it, there's a lot of displacement. And I was literally unable to stand. I kept on crashing into either side of the, the instruments when I was standing up there. And like the captain and his crew, it was as if they're shoes were nailed to the to the deck i mean they weren't even moving they, they were just like this just standing still <laughs> and i was kind of bent over for you, starting to feel really queasy the guy said to me you know maybe better if you this is your first time you should go <laughs> maybe go to bed so i did i went i went to bed and and i remember i was vinnie get got i mean he gets really seasick he did at that time anyway vinnie's a tall guy I remember going into the room and I could see his feet sticking over the side of the bed and he was already asleep or trying to sleep so I went in as well and then I got, I got to sleep and I remember just waking up um, being kind of violently thrown from side to side and I kept on kind of leaving the bed and get smacking back down on it again uh, really quite rough yeah and I didn't feel so bad when I was lying down, but I, if I got up, I just felt violently sick. Violently. I mean, horror, like, it's the, the feeling of seasickness is, is um, you, you just, just, you just want it to stop, and, but you can't make it stop. You can't eat, you can't drink, you can't do anything. I went out to the back of the boat, and you don't want to be out there in, in a, like, in a, I think it was a Force 9 gale. You, you don't want to be out there. So I, I walked in, there's a part of the boat called the wheelhouse and it stank of diesel and uh, that made me kind of violently sick over the side and I just went back in and went to bed again.
one point they called us for um, for dinner and uh, the chef was really good I mean he was really good we, we got up we sat down they I think it was steak steak with a lot I remember it was a mustard sauce or something like that and me and Vincent you know we were just sat there looking at it as if to say you know we can't enjoy this this amazing food because it we just feel terrible we feel completely sick eventually we got to the location and it was it was a force nine gale um, I don't know if that means anything to you but the boat was moving a lot side to side up to down and it's if you go to the bridge if you ever seen those videos um, on YouTube where you see the, the boats going up like this and then crashing down into the waves it was like that the water was smashing all the way up onto the to the window of the bridge and it was it was really 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 violent storm now, if I recall correctly Carl was also with us he was also a fellow engineer the guys on the rig the engineers on the rig called down and said we're gonna proceed with the job and I was very still very new so knowing what I know now I would have I would have refused uh, on a health and safety uh, basis but back back at that time I didn't know much better so we went outside and we started trying to put the connect all the airlines to the compressors and get the guns ready and you know we had this guy with the, with the crane he'd never done the job with us before and uh, it was really tough because the boat's moving like this and what you actually have to do is connect the airline and um, it's called a loom an airline it's got four airlines kind of thick airlines and the electronic cables which connect to the gun frame it goes up through the the hook to the crane with some floats on it and then that loom goes back to the compressors and the um, uh, the electronic system so we had to connect all of this stuff together while the boat was moving around in a force 9 gale I was basically being sick all the time and there was a, there was one point where I, met, I remember looking across um, to see where Vinny was and all I could see was like his his hand holding a, an airline <laughs> sticking away from the side and, and the rest of his body was bent over behind the container I was I was like well what's Vinny up to so I, I went around to see what he was up to and he was <laughs> he was being sick and then that made me feel sick and then I was being sick and I saw the captain on the on the uh, the bridge of the vessel just looking down at us kind of with a smile on his face he must have been like ah these land lovers <laughs> but I've never I've never experienced anything like that before in my life trying to trying to put together um, an air gun system with the compressors in a force 9 gale on the back back of a boat then when we had everything ready and the engineer on the rig uh, radio down said right let's get started Put the guns in the water you pick up the guns and put the guns over the side and then drop them down of course this um this chap that we had on the on the boat with, with without much experience he boomed up like he lifted the boom up and then picked the guns up and as soon as the guns came off the deck they started swinging around like crazy and uh smashing into the containers and things like that and, i mean i hit the deck myself a few times super dangerous super dangerous thinking back on it that was just uh we should have stopped the job we should have stopped the job but we i didn't know any better at the time unfortunately um anyway we managed to get the guns in the water and uh and get the job started now on that job in a similar way to the job in mozambique um i was feeling absolutely sick the whole way through the job it was hard work as well keeping the you know the the air supply to the guns the compressors figuring out how they work trying to trying to learn as well from um, from Carl and Vinnie and, and I felt terrible the whole time and there was nothing I could do to stop it the boat was constantly moving and um, I mean yeah we were we were vomiting all the time as well it was just and you can't eat anything because you just and whenever you smell like diesel or cigarettes or anything like that it just starts you off again I've never experienced anything like seasickness quite like it it's it's really it's really awful um, anyway we finished the job and on the way back I was again thinking to myself I'm gonna I'm gonna hand my notice in I can't do this this isn't for me funny feeling actually when you get onto the land 
that it's like as if the land is moving. Your expect your body's ex started to get used to standing on a, a moving surface, and you you stand on solid ground, and it starts. It feels like it's moving. You're kind of walking side to side. It's a really strange feeling. Um, but that, that was another one where I, I got back onto land and I thought, wow, that was an adventure. That was amazing. Then the, uh, you know, the equipment would come back from offshore and we'd have to service everything and get it ready for, for the next job whenever that would be. And you know, during that time, you, you get together with all the people that you had those experiences with. You talk to them. You have, you know, you eat with them. You, you, you know, share a staff house with them. And also some of the engineers, when you talk to them, you know, man, I want to be on the rig next time. I don't want to be on the boat. And they're like, ah, you have to earn it. You can't just go on the rig. You have to earn it. We've all done it. <laughs> you have to learn that bit first. So you know the ins and outs of it, like the back of your hand before you go into the rig. Um, but yeah, you start talking to the people who've been in the business for, for decades and you realize, no, this is, this, is, uh, this is what it's all about. It's a lot of fun. Those kind of experiences are what uh, what kind of makes you part of what makes you love the job. So, in a nutshell, quite a big nutshell, but that's uh, that's pretty much what happened on the job. And uh, big shout out to to Vinny and Carl and all of the guys in uh, in Den Elder, uh, Jesper and and Mark. And uh, sorry if I've missed anyone out, but yeah, you guys, uh, you're great to work with. Had, had an amazing experience. Got introduced to something called Vla, which is like a like a liquid custard, but it's absolutely delicious. I've never found it anywhere else except for Holland. So for now, I'll leave you with that one. If you enjoyed that story, you want to hear more, like and subscribe. Uh, inshallah, I've got a lot more stories like this to come. I'm sharing these stories so that people can understand what I went through when I first started working. Maybe you can relate it to something you're going through or maybe if you want to work in the oil industry or offshore or on boats or something or in Mozambique this might help you but yeah as, as a taste of what's to come I did another job in Mozambique before then going off to a posting in the Far East which is where things uh, yeah started to get interesting so see you on the next one inshallah Asalaamu Alaikum